CRWS Countering Racism White Supremacy Book Club. Like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Yeah, hold on. I, for, I, I gotta dig in a little bit more. I, I, just a little bit more on this 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 Meller character. Meller. Yeah, Meller. Um, the, oh, the black um... male in the chains. The zombie. zombie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about you know how he he's you know he's featureless, but um, this is literally how the races have us right now, twenty twenty two. Exactly how we see uh, Meller just yo know, he this this he needs help, you know this victim of racism Meller needs help. I suspect right now he needs help in the form of being eliminated his condition of being a victim no longer needs to exist so we have to no longer have him being a victim and needs to be eliminated so in the film they should have just killed Miller. He, he needs to be eliminated right now 2022 they just need to stop mistreating us so we can stop being victims you know producing a system of justice by guaranteeing no one is allowed to be mistreated and those who need help receive protective help. That will that will prevent us from being victims. And we won't be mailers anymore. You know, so he, he he's, he's like reaching out for help, literally. We're reaching out for help. We're all the mailers right now, reaching out to white man, white woman, white child, the racist collective. Hey, help us out. Produce justice, please. But are they doing that? <laughs> they are. They are certainly. No um, evidence. No evidence. Yeah, no, no, certainly no evidence that they are that they are doing that. And they they have us on a really, really um tight leash. They control our our thinking, they can control our speaking, they control our action, and they even control how we react to stuff because they control our very thoughts. So racist man, racist woman, they done an excellent job and we have we you know. This character is really important, probably one of the most important characters in the film, because who is the greatest target of the system? The black man. Black people. Yeah. Then the black male. You know, the black male has to be totally, totally, you know, just so subjugated and so victimized. Yeah, and they cover it up, you know, by uh, by giving us by letting us see Meller kill a white person. But what he what he said is still true. Meller is still featureless unless you know nobody killed him. He's still alive, running around as a zombie. He's gonna have to you know go out the the more incorrect way, starving to death is way worse than a quick elimination. I I would suspect. But um, yes, white people. Not the white. If you're not racist, then I'm talking to you. Go, go, go somewhere else. But there were powerful white people who are practicing racism, who are maintaining the system. You know, help us to produce justice, or kill all of us. Very simple. You know, you guys. Hey, are, uh, go ahead. Real, real quick. All right. So they showed us Jim's family, but did they ever show us <laughs> Selena's family? Like. At all? I mean, not, let alone even like ask her because like I think they mentioned her family no they no. they they do mention her family but she doesn't care about her family because she, oh. she, oh, like, okay. she mentions you know you know mark says her family is mark says her family's dead too but selena she doesn't care about her own family being dead her own victim unit being dead but she's wow. been taught care about hannah care about hannah having to see her father die care about that cry they're not cry about the Hannah didn't cry who saw Hannah crying I didn't see Hannah crying I once about her father died <laughs> or Jim but Selena did a lot of crying so even when uh you know Jim got shot at uh matter of fact Aiden got the actual time stamp it said 143 35 seconds um and like, and like he is like screaming to her lungs that he that he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Yes. Who was that? Somebody sent something in the WhatsApp group, Black Pain. Oh, for real? Somebody sent, I could have sworn somebody sent something in a trailer about Black Pain. I don't know if it's a parody or a skit or something. Uh, yeah. But that's all that is. Black Pain is entertainment for racist man and racist Yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. Like train us to, to worship the racist and then, you know, Put put us on the screen crying over the racist, and they love yeah. seeing that. They love seeing their victims. So. Yeah, like said, uh, Stephen from Mr. Candy and Django. Forty four seconds. Forty four seconds. He's like screaming to a lung. I should probably just play it from there, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we're not allowed anymore. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's like, man, she's still like functioning. She's like very alert. <laughs> I'm just talking about the uh, white child. She's like alert of everything that's going on. Drugs give me superpowers. Is that why they take them? <laughs> yeah. Because she was over there prophesying. Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, I had it in my notes too. Um, I, the question was Is <clears throat> Hannah being on drugs? a way for them to enhance themselves. Certainly. Great question. Great question. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the Urugu has, has needs the outside help for in a form of chemicals known as drugs to help them with a number of things, procreation, you know, not being damaged by the sun, you know, getting the proper vitamins that the sun should give them, you know, a number of things they, they use drugs for. So that could be a code, definitely could be code. And we, I think black people do not need to be taking this particularly synthetic drugs. I think it has a more immediate disastrous effect as we can see in Atlanta season three, episode eight. Oh, I still haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I watched that at during yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, 05, oh, wow. <clears> oh, <throat> five brought it up. And, um, you know, you, you okay, had wait, it like wait, a, wait, uh, one second. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to wrap up this because um, this 28 days later. Clip. I'm gonna attach this to the beginning of the discussion we just did. All right, but no problem. Let me mute. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to CRWS Counter Racist Review Film Analysis Decoding of 28 Days Later. I believe this is 2002. Danny Boyle film. But yeah, yeah. So getting started, um, let's just go, let's, let's just, just um, use race code war a little bit to talk about the, the costumes in the beginning of the um, film. Oh, I'll, I'll just leave it. This, this is a good image to leave right here as well. You know, um, system of racism, white supremacy, has color coded everything. Yeah, everything is um, what they say. An image worth a thousand words. And the beginning scene, um, we have a group of white people who are doing a criminal act. You know, breaking and entering, sabotaging a a um science lab or something like that. And then they are wearing black. You know, they're all wearing black, black ski masks dressed in black because in the system of white supremacy hey if you're going to do something criminal dressed in black wear a ski mask you know some refined white supremacy that that ski mask those um bal bal balakavas or whatever they call them some refined racism right there and um i noticed um one of the suspected racists um who were breaking in to save um 
the animals who were infected with the rage virus. Um, he's like, we're, 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 we're getting your torture victims out of here. And I'm like, hmm, imagine if they felt the same way about the actual torture victims in the system of white supremacy and non-white people, especially black people. I mean, you know, how, how about they get us out of the system of white supremacy and replace it with a system of justice? That would be nice, but nope. In the system of white supremacy, we have um, groups like PETA, you know, a number of groups that are dedicated to helping animals, helping the wildlife. No groups dedicated to producing a system of justice, it seems, helping Black people to stop being mistreated simply because they are classified as Black. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a lot of racist thinking in this film. And um, yeah. I would say a lot of this films also predictive programming, but that's all I'll, I'll say about that. I don't want to YouTube people to, to um, get too distracted and from the system of white supremacy, honestly. All right, I'll pause there. Folks, chime in if you had notes to share. One thing that stood out to me also about the opening scene, did you see the non-white male uh, may be referred to as an Arab? They kept showing the hanging scene, him hanging on the television. Same. And I see, I see this movie came out in 2002 and this was just four years before the public hanging of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what else do I have about this opening scene. Uh, someone yeah, that was like in the uh, first minute, uh, oh five two six. Sorry, but oh yes, sir. Uh, you also had mentioned the uh the police state, uh, and that reminded me of earlier in the week when Mister Fuller was uh talking about uh police action. Y'all remember that on the broadcast earlier this week? That's it. That's I haven't it. heard the whole thing, but, but yeah. Well, remember, well, Mr. Fuller was saying something about him being, uh, they didn't consider the Korean War a real war. It was more of a police action. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I, yep. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how and this is the second. Oh, go ahead, sir. That was gonna say that's how the system of white supremacy is um sort of set up to function, like uh, what people can describe as a police state, where there are definitely um, people in charge, people over you, the racist men and racist women, and they have a the authority to uh, mistreat you as they say, as they so as they so please. Um, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ray, continue. Oh, I was just also going to point out that this is the uh, second night in the row. We have a post-apocalyptic movie with a white man and black female. Yeah, yeah. Great catch with the um, Saddam, I mean, with the hanging, um, like, coded message in there and, and, and the correlating that with the victim of racism, um, Saddam Hussein being uh, publicly um, mistreated and killed. Um, I did also notice something similar, like he just mentioned. This is the third movie we watched in a row, decoded where, hey, there's a white man saving a black female, and the, all the black males are completely helpless, or are nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be seen. So, or or <laughs> infected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, go ahead, sir. No, no, uh, I was gonna, um, I guess I'll talk about Selena's character for a little bit, because at first, Selena, man, she seemed so serious. She was very yeah. serious about her, like, it seemed like she was very serious about her survival, you know? She had a, a, a code of survival, you know? She was she was asking questions, and, and then it's nothing personal, just business, trying <laughs> to survive. Now, when she gets attached, she, she she gets feelings for this white man, this this racist, 
Jam character, all the logic's out the window. Now she's in so-called love, I guess. She thinks she's in love, doesn't exist on planet Earth currently. So she just now, um, the scene, she, she becomes helpless. Uh, she used to be a um, badass, some would say, you know, able to defend herself. But now she's a damsel in distress because she has become um, infatuated with a racist. And this is what it does to the mind. It definitely causes confusion and um, the, the, the self perseverance, the, 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 the will to, um, you know, maintain one's existence seems to go out of the window because she was, seems to be more concerned about saving Hannah, protecting Hannah, consoling <laughs> Hannah, than, you know, maintain, making sure she's not going to get raped by a bunch of race soldiers, you know forever yeah. but yeah i'll pause there i'll pause there pause one. um i would say <clears throat> even before that like you know you know she had this certain cold like you know once that white guy was infected she just automatically was like you gotta die simple as that um so like boom i was okay she she like you know killed a a, a white infected white person um and then I would say she started to let her guard down with the logic once when they met the uh, the uh, father and uh, daughter to where that's when she started to not follow logic, like pretty much even when even when she was trying to give them uh, logic, like, no, let's not go there. They went and just ignored her. So. I was like, you know, she's not the leader. <laughs> uh, uh, let me go back. Also, the, yeah. the, go sorry about that. Yeah, then there's a Snapchat, and to her confusion, because even though she's serious and she just killed, um, she just you know had to handle some business and <laughs> and kill her um her associate, one of her um, previous white associates. She's walking with Jim, and then she's like, "What's your plan, Jim? You know, it's your plan for her to fall in love and 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 have gutter sex." You know, she didn't say it like that, but that's what that's what she's meant. What she's meaning, you know, a white person cannot have sex with a non-white person. That's called gutter sex. That's called rape, experimental sex, and the system of white supremacy it cannot be correctly called sex so that's a snapchat to her confusion she's already been fed you know you know those fairy tales so even though it's she's in a post-apocalyptic scenario the fairy tale thinking given to um, black males and especially black females is still in there that fantasy of finding a prince charming and falling in love and living happily ever after that is still in there and that's what i got from her saying um her saying that and also saying hey i don't have a plan you know this is how the system appreciate seeing their victims not having a plan you know she's she's surviving you know but why what is the purpose of her wanting to survive she's, no plan you know no purpose it seems but that's the thinking we've been given and even in um, a zombie apocalypse it, it, the programming is still definitely in effect and uh, yeah she's definitely not the leader she was uh at one point before um when Jim was um, a less powerful white person, meaning he didn't have the information. At first, Jim yes, is, yes. Um, he's less intelligent. He's, he's less refined. He's, he, he, he doesn't know how to um, exist in this current phase of white supremacy with the zombies going about, you know? So that's all it is, a, a different phase of white supremacy. It ain't going nowhere. It just, just um, changed a bit. Yeah, exactly. So uh, once he got the information, and um, from her, like um, when they're at the burger spot getting the gas, he's like, "I'm not listening to you no more. I'm gonna go check out this burger spot. Well, I'm not listening. I mean, I'm not. I'm not the gym in the hospital guy no more. I'm the shave head gym. I know what's going on now. You know, you and I'm still in charge. You know, it's, you know, you got black skin. <laughs> so that's what her I got. Character, her go character ahead. reminds me of Michonne from The Walking Dead. Yes. Yo, I swear, I swear. This movie has so many com comparisons to like other movies and shows after the fact. It's like, man, like I know I, it seems as though that whoever saw this flick 
man, they got very inspired to write something that was similar, but yeah, they they like made it their own way, basically. Yeah, the, yeah, this racist propaganda here, twenty eight days later, is definitely responsible for Robert Kirkman's racist piece of propaganda known as The Walking Dead and a number of other post-apocalyptic scenarios where, hey, you know, we get we get Michonne character, Celine character, the, the bad-ass Black female who's eventually going to be a strong a Black woman. woman. Yeah, yeah. They I, I was it, getting kind of, I get kind of suspicious with that when they show that character. It, are you showing her to be strong so you can abuse her? Are you showing her to be constructive? And it's usually the other one. She's a strong black, black woman. Now she can be abused. That that that's what I see. Yep they they want us to be, they want us to believe we're seeing a strong black woman, but we're really seeing a highly confused confused. Black female. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because yeah. they talk oh, about her in the third person when they were going to go find Jim's parents or their dead bodies, I guess. Like <laughs> if you want her to slow down, she's right there. If you need her to slow down, just say, can you slow down, please? It's always the talking act, talking about like it's a pet. Yep. Even in, um, hey, even if maybe um, I'm just tripping, but um, when they're doing the introduction, Selena is not even allowed to say my name. Her is name. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, I forget. Maybe I think I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mark, when they Mark, get to the. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Right here. When they it's, get to the pretty much, go ahead. Right, go yeah. Ahead, sorry. Go ahead. It's I and it's also at the um when they get to the I guess the fort that house that they were in with the soldiers. She doesn't uh, say her name there. And then I think where you were before, I don't think they introduce her there, but I don't but I don't yeah, know if she it was says the other her white name. Character. Yeah. yeah. He speaks for her. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. And then, um, yeah, well, she she seems to go from being a you know a a um, somewhat serious you know capable black female to a a a mammy figure taking care of a white this is this white child <laughs> Hannah into it you yeah. know stitching up stitching up stuff. I have to make sure she's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. So did Michonne with Rick Grimes' daughter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, son. Um, son. His, um, and daughter. Yeah, he had his a daughter. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah, he had yeah, two kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but yeah, she was like the uh babysitter. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I remember I remember there's a whole montage her her, her waking up, <laughs> taking care of the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh and um yeah, this, she did show some uh, um, re really quick, she did show some black self respect when she uh, did not imbibe with the racist suspects. Right. When was that? Uh, when they that were all like so early in, on. When they were all up in the apartment and they had mums, creme de la, mom, whatever that green alcohol that they were drinking. Oh, she didn't drink now? No, she didn't drink with them. Uh, Good. Right. Yeah. yeah. And also, I, I noticed that um, when they were walking on the tracks, the white men were together and a black female was by herself. Anyone catch that? Yeah. Right. That's when they were talking about her in the third person. Uh, oh. It's like not, can you please slow down so the injured male can keep, keep up? But then that's not her code. It's just talk about her in the third person even though she's right there with an inch out of you. Don't talk to her. Don't communicate with her. Talk about her. Talk at her. And then that's what I was going to say. It's on my note here. The white male is compassionate and cares about people. And he is the one who helps the Black female get in touch with her emotions. Yeah, what do you say? Uh, I was gonna tell you, but I didn't think you would give it give a shit. You know that reverse psychology, like mm -hmm. you know, you know, like ah, uh, yep, excellent, excellent analysis. Yep, 
And uh, what actually happened was that she was um, serious and capable, and then mm -hmm. he weakened her. Throughout the movies, the Selena character is weakened mm -hmm. due, to, due to racist sabotage, and then eventually the most ultimate form of racist sabotage being raped by a white person and thinking it's sex, thinking it's love, that none of that is, is actually the case. It's, it's rape. It's, and, and that is the most ultimate form of aggression that a white person can act out against us. Uh, and and I and I used to watch this film religiously, like as a youngster, all the oh, time, wow. all the time. Like I think that this movie had a lot of effect on <laughs> other victims or or just yeah. white people in, in general, just to create you know another yes. mass mass confusion type of TV show. But go ahead. Yep, yep. You, you get you get a whole lot of um, people thinking, um, hey. What they call interracial couple, hey, that's they ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, let's keep the um out of the film analysis going. Cause I got I got a number of notes here. Um up, up, up. and did y'all notice that she is a chemist? And I'm a kind of uh she's a chemist, so she had that volume when they were out in the uh, field trying to sleep. So they have everyone partaking in drugs. But uh, later on in the film, Hannah has taken some of the Valium. And despite her inebriated status, she is still in control <laughs> enough to attack Jim, who she thought was a zombie and was biting Hannah. He says he wasn't, but I say he is. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a cheek. Uh, that's a um really like quadruple coded message right there because they they're actually telling on themselves because yeah he 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 is aggressing on her for sure aggressing on her, which which is what a bite I, can be coded. Yeah, as. I thought you were biting her. Yeah, and and then she also takes the OC. She has them in the car, and she's despite being on Valium, she's able to drive the car, back it up. So the OC is uh, attacked by the black male zombie who I put the black male zombie gets his revenge. And then she is able to drive them out of there. Even though she's on Valium. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what is this teaching us? Because this is teaching you as long as you're a good white person code for a refined racist a refined suspect racist hey you're, you're you're safe you know you're capable because there's a movie called apocalypse now where the same thing happens they're in mm -hmm. a great battle mm -hmm. a great serious battle and there's a stone soldier high on acid he survives he survives all the all the bombs all, all the guns gunfire he survives why because he's white he's white power I can be inebriated and still be in control of my faculties and still run stuff. Yeah. White and still functioning. <laughs> white and still functioning. That, that, that's a famous racist trope. You know, a white person can be inebriated, intoxicated, and still still solving problems, still capable. Did we see that in uh, Star Trek yesterday? Yes. <laughs> hey, yes. I'm, I'm, building, I'm building warp drives, but I'm drunk. <laughs> you know, let's do it. it that's a racist trope. And I've been drinking it? all day. I drink 24. I drink yeah. during all waking hours, but I can still build a rocket ship. Yeah. And they, they credit the, the, the suspected racist who allegedly came up with the internet. You know, they credit him with being a, a psychedelic um, user. So it's just really interesting. They, uh, I also caught, like, they're really um, crafty with the racism in this film. Super, super crafty. There's the picnic scene um it, it was super quick easy to miss but there's a part um where selena and jim are talking and then they're like selena's like they have each other referring to um hannah and um the dad and then um hannah's playing with, with her father and uh, they're playing around and then hannah no the father calls hannah a cheeky monkey and as soon as he says cheeky monkey, it's a close-up 
of Selena. Right after that, cheeky monkey. And the next, the next shot is a close up of Selena, and I was like, "Oh, they're crafty with that one. <laughs> Super crafty." I missed that one. I did too. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, because he he he's calling um the white he's calling his white daughter a cheeky monkey, but for 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 the more um intelligent, the more refined. Races who are paying attention, I'm sure they picked up on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, this, and, this, and this is a dangerous situation, period. Whenever you're like surrounded by white people, you're in danger. If you like, this is a dangerous situation, you know, but they've normalized it. They've normalized, hey, you know, behind enemy lines, that this is what we, we're in. System white supremacy is being behind enemy lines and um and they have us behind enemy lines smiling not not having a clue what's going on you know we still be sometimes we're strong but because we don't know they're able to weaken us you know and this is what happens to selena's character in this film so oh yeah so what, Go ahead, go ahead. Because no, 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 I know, because uh, I know Ray was going to say something. But go ahead. I caught a little bit of symbolism right in the beginning scenes. First of all, Urugu woke up cold and naked, and then after that, you know, it shows him walking through the city streets. Right? It shows him walking in front of the right there, right there, right there that statue in front of a white lion and then the scene directly the new after Rome. that one. No, the scene directly after that one. So I guess he's supposed to be the white lion, correct? All right. See if you can... There's a scene right there with him standing in front of Big Ben and the white lion. Big Ben is right there. So there you have that gold phallic symbol right there behind the white lion who I'm guessing is supposed to be this white man. That just reminded me of how, uh, you know, Mr. Fuller says the the white man's anus, uh, you, you know this, what he says about that. I don't want to misquote Mr. Fuller. Yeah, and, and that that allows me to understand like Jim's character, you know, he, he, he is um, a, a racist um, gladiator, you know, at first he's a less refined racist, but eventually he becomes, you know, just like, you know, what these statues echo back to, you know, the gladiator days of Rome, you know, he, he's in a new realm. He has a new, new conquest. He has a conquest, this new zombie situation. And, and that's what he does. You know, he be definitely becomes a racist warrior and, and gets the job done. And, and also, then, hmm? it, 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 it's actually great that Ray, like, like brought this actual scene up because this this was the first episode of The Walking Dead. Like, like you have this one white male. He has on a, I believe, a, uh, you know, green um, hospital gown. And he's just by himself walking across the... Uh, Atlanta Bridge and you know I, I mean like listen <laughs> this movie has so many comparisons to the other things it's this it's, it's maddening it's maddening that's amazing. Um, that's amazing yeah like uh I was thinking of Resident Evil watching this outbreak from the uh you know monkeys aspect where they said that they were infected with rage um you know of course Planet of the Apes uh and um yeah like uh yeah man like i said wow this this whole like i mean this 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 scene right here walking dead episode one <laughs> wow yeah, like <laughs> i'm you right that, that was an excellent catch like the, you being able to 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 see like how, how they're blocking setting up these scenes and these shots is really it's really incredible because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to to understand like Jim's character also being like um a racist gladiator. 
as without the without um your input. So I also noticed some really refined activity. You gotta see this movie dozens of times. This is my first time seeing the race soldiers. Um, refined tactics of deceit and ambush and sabotage. All right. So, you know, it's, it's for, for the, um, for the, those who are um, probably less aware, they may see this scene as just why a tragic accident, you know, a tragic accident, you know, the father dying, you know, the army people just got there in time. But if you understand what the race soldiers are doing, the people who are pretending to be soldiers, but they're actually race soldiers supporting racism, white supremacy. What they're actually doing is trying to get women. They want women to rape, you know, you know, which is kind of what their business is all about. So the, the soldiers are here. They're watching them. They're watching all of this, but they don't want to have to deal with like the men. So they waited and, and saw what would happen. And lucky for them, this character, the father character, ends up dying, you know? Well, actually, yeah, they end up killing him, you know, directly and indirectly, I would say. But that's how the race soldiers operate, you know? They're not actually here to help us. They're here to maintain the system and get what they want, you know, fulfill their, their wants of material comfort. And in this film, the material comfort was they wanted women. They wanted women to rape. And I've seen this movie dozens of times, but I'm just understanding, oh, they're trying to rape these women. Wow. Hey, one thing I just saw um, when you were scrolling back through there, the time on there said an hour and 57 minutes. And that's ironic because that's the apartment that they stayed in, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. And that's just a little Snapchat of how they will use numbers. Like they code everything, time codes, numbers, so many things that we're missing. Um, 28 days, the whole 20, like the, the number 28, I'm sure it has significance in their court. And also you can Google, I'm sure it has a um, angel number or whatnot, but everything is definitely um, coded. But we'd be here all day trying to decipher everything because, you know, they're really crafty. Um, but yeah, very, very, very interesting. Um, I would say, uh, when they, uh, you know, got to that, uh, place where the uh, army men were, um, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, white guy showed him the, uh, black male that was chained up, uh, and then, Heller. Uh, and <laughs> Yeah, there, there you go. Him. He, uh, you know, had a, you know, black male chained up and saying that, you know, we didn't want to kill him. We're, we're basically just trying to see how he, you know, operates. Basically, they were like basically studying him. Um, then you like, you know, later on, you have the uh, white man in the, uh, in like in the actual gown. So I wrote down a uh, homoeroticism with the British Army. Uh, but then they were also name calling the uh, black male while that they were at dinner. Uh, um, and then that's when he tells them the actual truth that basically we want to breed these two females, uh, which means he was practicing deception the whole time. Uh, I'm mute. <laughs> yeah, this scene is super important. Cause he says some key things here. He says, um, I'm gonna tell you what I see here. And he says like, uh, I see a person with no future. He's featureless. Uh, that's code for the black male is featureless. Why? Because in the system of white supremacy, we have been infected with a way of thinking, a way of thinking, in a way of behaving that does not get us pointed in the direction of producing a, a system of justice where all this misery and incorrectness can end. It's a way of thinking that is gonna keep all of it going forever. And that's not a feature for any non-white person, especially black people. So that that is exactly 
what racist man, racist women want. They want black male, black people, not white people collectively to be futurist, to not even think that this system can be replaced with something way better. So this seems super important. I've seen it again dozens of times, but it has never made sense to me until seeing it while understanding that I am in a system of white supremacy. Futurist. This is how racist men, racist women think about their subjects. This is how they need their subjects to think about their existence. You know, it's not gonna get any better. Can't end racism. Well, you know, people are just gonna be how they are. You can't end racism. That's futureless thinking, also called zero risk thinking. You know, producejustice.com. Please get your copy of the code book. Did anyone catch that? Did, did, my, did that analysis make sense to folks? Yes, sir. Yes. Sure did. Did we also notice earlier when it was the four, Hannah and her father, and then uh, Selena and Jim, uh, they see the four horses. The adult horses are white. The foals are black. A family is what the dad says. Oh, wow, four, four horsemen. That's in reference. <laughs> but the adults are white and the offspring are black. <laughs> wow, amazing catch. <laughs> this is well, a good wow. catch right here. <laughs> yeah, and the system of white supremacy, yes. Yeah, like, like, what does the code say? the United Independent Compensatory Code System concepts say that all non-white people are the illegitimate children of racist men and racist women. You know, we, we have to function as the illegitimate bastard children. And, and, and this is what we're seeing here. You know, this is so coded so well. I, I didn't even catch it, but I do see the white horses being a little bit bigger. You know, yeah, and, they're adults. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if they're mayors. They're probably mayors. <laughs> But where did they the two foals come from? <laughs> Are they adopted? Please tell me they're not adopted. But anyway, also shortly after Jim is on high on Valium, trying to go to sleep, and he has his nightmare, and he sees the white sheep circling. I wonder what the significance of that is. It might be a little further down, but yeah, it's a he's you know kind of in his hallucination, his dream or whatever, and it's a bunch of white sheep circling each other down the hill from wherever he is. Um, this scene is um also very interesting because it is showing how the race family actually operates. You know the. The, the race family uh, sticks together. Um, the father, like he, he when when he's referring to um, the horses and whatnot, he he's spreading confusion by having Selena think that that's a, a family, and by having him think that she could be in a family with these people. That's impossible in the system of white supremacy. But there is one family that is allowed to exist on planet Earth, and that is the white family, the race family. And this is why we see um, Jim call him dad, you know, because mm -hmm. that's how the system works. You know, that that is his dad. You know, every white person is supposed to be, you know, it's one, one big white family, essentially. So, and, but what has the system done? It has trained us to also, you know, want to be included in his family. And it, it has, you know, definitely given us a many a roles to be in his family. Mammy figures for once and concubines, another role. And we see that um, those roles in Selena's character as she is weakened throughout this, this film because of this, um, this capture. She is captured by Jim and captured by these, by these white people. And she didn't even know it. Um, yeah, we see, um, 
suspected racist and conflict with one another. That's very common. While at the same time, racism, white supremacy is not getting any weaker. So yeah, nothing new about a room full of racists arguing. I had a, another little decoding when they were all in the vehicle and they were getting ready to go inside the tunnel. And Jim says, no, take the indirect route, bright, daylight, not underground. And I was thinking like, at first I was like, okay, not underground railroad. And then they go ahead and go inside the tunnel anyway. And then when the infected come, did you all notice that they were all shadows? They didn't show any of the infected faces. Yes, sir. It was like, like, like watching ghosts. <laughs> right, right. It was like the slaves were coming on the, the Underground Railroad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's the captain. <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember that. There's actually an article about, about that scene. Like, I think that scene is very, actually very, very famous because a lot of people got the message. Um, I, I didn't get your decoding. And when I was watching it, but I definitely understand your analysis. And wow. <laughs> I just saw like dark figures, there's dark, scary creatures coming, but yeah, underground, yeah. The word association makes sense. Uh, and um, I guess while we're here, you know, he used, they use Christmas lights to attract Selena and Jim to get there. And when they get there, they want to celebrate you know, in a zombie apocalypse, is there anything to celebrate, really? In the system of white supremacy, is there anything to celebrate? You know, and really, really <laughs> quick about that scene: the lights were being powered by the all-white battery. Now, I don't, I've never seen an all-white battery. Before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've also, uh, Mo, yeah, most. Things that of, of electricity and technology is kind of black, you know, giant. Yeah, I've never seen a white generator either, but that's very telling white power. Um, let's see what else. What else? Yeah, I, I think when Jim gets his um his his shave, I think that 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 when he's that's when he becomes in charge. He stops letting Selena. I um, think that that he that she's in charge. Um, oh, also the outfit again with the all black, you know, using black to represent uh, not only the criminal element, the the supernatural evil element, but also you know power, you know protection, you know with his, his costume and this scene right here. Yeah. Black and leather. It looks like something from off the purge. Mm-hmm. Also something also something like a pop out of um that that box in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh if you remember that scene. Tragically. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I I I I've I've gone through all my notes. Um oh dang, I just had it. I just saw it. I mean, <laughs> oh, I have one more if, if you didn't have anything else. Yeah, well here, here we are. Here we are, they're like scary dark um uh, image of a dark <laughs> dark creatures. <laughs> <laughs> no, just black figures. Goodbye, you efforts. Goodbye, you niggers. Basically, is what it's saying. I suspect, but hey, I'm just... right, you go go ahead, Mister A. Race uh, yes. Uh, towards the end, the black male soldier, before he was viciously killed, he was saying, "I haven't got any bullets. I haven't got any bullets." 
And that scene reminded me of when Mr. Fuller says that the most impotent form, uh, the most impotent creature in the form of a person is a black male. He's sitting here cuddling <laughs> his right. So, I'm like, really completely helpless, that. like, run, do like, well, like, to you, like. <laughs> Just completely powerless, impotent, just a true illustration. Yeah, like that. And um, when when we when you study the ISIS papers and you study the code and uh, Yorugu and like symbology, how the racist mind will just operates, you would know that you know bullets. The like bullets is code for you know, um, they they equate bullets guns with masculinity with manliness being able to do things take action you know and this black male i'm trying to get it i'm trying to get it on the on the screen um but yeah he's literally like just run out the window just follow jim out the out the window just just do something but they've trained us to just you know be utterly um helpless in a system of white supremacy and <laughs> Yeah, that's excellent analysis. Because uh, yeah, another scene I've seen dozens of times, but you know, didn't compute. I I didn't see it as a powerless black male. You know, he's a, you know rifle butt, <laughs> you know rifle butt. But nope, he has the military training, but right? he's asking the non-military trained <laughs> individual who is running away from the zombies for help. Oh, yeah. Don't leave me here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Do your legs not work? Yeah, well, yeah, what's the, what, yeah, what, what's the time code? What's One it? hour, 40 minutes, and uh, five seconds. 140, right there. Yep. Yep, right there. <laughs> there he is, tragically. Does his legs not work? Is he injured? I don't see any injuries on his legs. Nope. But apparently they don't work. And apparently his military <laughs> training failed him. Yeah, he's I don't scared. have any bullets. Uh, well, uh, yeah. You have military training, sir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. This is tragic. Like, and um, <laughs> and, and and I think when white people watch films, I think they already have a already less confused way of what they're seeing. Because we like most non-white people, we watch films confused. Because I was watching a movie, and yeah, I, nothing was incorrect about this scene. Nothing was, I you know, but. You know, he's trained soldier, trained for combat. This is combat right here, but. And hasn't that, he been dealing with these zombies since before they got there? I'm like, uh, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, they got a whole operation. They got like, you know, lights to turn on and then boom, <laughs> here, here they go shooting them and killing them. So, I mean, if that's not procedure, how aren't you like making that click in your head? So. Yes. yes, but but see what happened was the the racist chain Double of command. Win. Win. Yeah, the racist chain of command was um severed. So you know him being a highly confused subject from racism, didn't know what to do. You know, he's not his own leader, basically. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and 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 again, racist man, racist woman, Mister Danny Boyle. You know, arrange this this character here. You know, racist men and racist women produce people classified as black. They they produce us and they train us and lead us to behave in this manner. They, they give us this impotency, if that's even a word. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess my last note. Uh... I don't know how this relates to the actual character, uh, Jim, but uh, I did look up the number 28 and what it means. So it says, uh, angel number 28, meaning a symbol of wealth and joy. Uh, here's the uh, significance and meaning of angel number 28. When angel number 28 repeats itself in your life, angels are assuring you a uh, per profusion of wealth which you can enjoy for this it is essential for you to be optimistic self-assured and approach life with a constructive outlook you should be indebted to the divine hold on, 
you should be indebted to the divine forces for this abundance. And this is meant for sharing with humanity. The more you bestow on others, the more you will prosper. So I don't know how that relates to June, but some of it kind of does, <laughs> in my opinion. And let's see. Did did, did Mr. Jim find great joy in this film? I would say yes. Because in the racist mind and racist lore, Hitler. they say one of the greatest, one of the greatest forms of joy you can experience. Sex with a black female. And he definitely, definitely got that 28 days later. So, uh, yeah. I would say that he got his fun, glory, and material gain. Mm, definitely. He even, he even survived the ultimate um, phallic, well, one of the most severe phallic attacks by another white man. He got shot by a white person survived. White power. <laughs> you know, like just unstoppable. Jim's unstoppable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think um yeah. Excellent discussion. This film is um considered um Cult classic, and um, I, I see why. Definitely has a lot of um, this same programming. Watch of this movie, and then, man, for this to be a classic, yeah, I definitely see why. I definitely see why. I'm mute. <laughs> yeah, but I call it a cult classic because it has a lot of the um, same um, um, brainwashing techniques, programming that you will see cults do. You know. Isolating victims, you know. We have Selena, only black, only black person, only black person around for most of the film. You know, practicing deception. We're a family. You know, hey, we need you. Hey, you need us too. You need us too. That's that's a lie. It's totally a lie. Especially in the context of this film, Selena could have. Cause Celia could, uh, yeah, you know, part away, left, you know, just it, this, yeah. Again, all films, and especially including this film, their main purpose is to have us remain accustomed to, remain willing to be in this tacky, trashy, and terroristic arrangement with one another. These films are meant to keep us conditioned to interact with each other in a very tacky, trashy, and terroristic way. You know, they may make us feel good. They may make, they may make us feel a lot of things sometimes, but at the end of the day, they're here to keep us and playing our roles. If you're a non-white person, you must remain a victim to the system, not thinking about solving a problem. And if you're a white person, you must either be whatever it means to be white or be a racist and help to maintain the system. That's my final, my final note. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Post this on some movie forums or something. And we'll be here, um, be here again real soon. I'll see post. Give it a lot, give it a little, um, Time for folks to think, have a, have a final comment while I go over my, um, oh yeah, Selena. Yeah, she was asked, she, yeah. She, yeah. Just remembering Selena's character. <clears throat> In the beginning, she was very serious. She was even asking codified questions. Hey, are you bitten? Did it get in your eye? You know, she had a code of how to survive, but then she just gets a weekend. Look, look, look at her costume right now pretty badass right and the film and the film let's let's see what, what, what she's wearing oh we, we don't need to see what she's wearing just just know that at the end of the film she's very weakened 
and she, yeah, it's a uh, red dress. <laughs> yes, yeah. At, at the end of the film, you know, at first she's doing the saving and the hacking, and and at the end of the film, she's she's um doing some sewing and um, being saved by by Jim. Racism, white supremacy, one on one. CRWS signing out. <laughs>